For the month of August, I have a free gift with purchase. This is the Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks. And I'm going to make a fun card with them tonight. And as I always talk about with masks, I am a stickler for pixie spray on these masks. It's a light tack repositionable adhesive for stencils. There's a link to this in the description of this video on Amazon. Um, I spray it on all my stencils. And then when I store my stencils, I store them sticky to sticky so that the adhesive stays to the adhesive. I don't really ever wash these off. You can, it does come off. It does take a little bit of elbow grease to get it off, but in my thought is why would you take it off? Why would you want to use a stencil without it sticking to your paper? You wouldn't. So I just never remove the, the stickiness. And then here is the snowflakes. I have that attached to a uh, acetate sheet that comes in our clear stamps and then these two, the leaves and the hound's tooth. So I'm going to make a card. So if you spend $100 with me um, in the month of August, and that could be more than one order, you guys. Let's just say that you have already placed a $50 order with me. And then, you know, towards the end of the month, you place a $60 order with me. That's $110. That qualifies for the masks. So you need to use my host code right here the DN3A9GPM, which you can always find on my blog at barbstamps.com. And then I will send you these masks in September because, of course, I can't order them until the catalog goes live. And keep in mind that your $100 order has to be after you redeem any coupon codes that you may have. So if your order is $100 even and you have two coupon codes, your order then is only $90 and that doesn't count. It needs to be $100 after any discounts applied. And then as I shared a little earlier, this is my gift with purchase for the month. If you order $100 through my online store in the month of August, uh, no matter how many orders you need to place to get to 100, um, you know, if you need to place two, three, one, whatever, um, then I will send you these masks in September when I can order them in bulk. Right now, as demonstrators, we can only order one. And so this is obviously my set. Um, I do use pixie spray on all my masks. I put a marking star on what I call the front, and then I spray pixie spray on the back. That way I always know what side has the pixie spray on it and what side I should put more pixie spray on uh, when it does become not sticky anymore. So the stuff does stick multiple times. You can use them over and over. Um, and then when they start to become less tacky, you can just spray them again with more pixie spray. And I do have a link to this in my Amazon storefront in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get out our papers here. So we are gonna be using some Misty Moonlight white and some pecan pie. So I have uh, my layer of white is four by five and a quarter. That's gonna go on the inside. My, I have two of these because if I screw one up, then I have a spare. This is a three and a half by four and three quarters. And then this is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths, the pecan pie. So we are gonna use our masks on our small layer of white. So I am gonna bring in a piece of scratch paper, just some random paper. Um, and we're gonna use the Daisy Daisy, no, sunflower masks. So I, excuse me, they are marked. Stampin' Up! does have them marked. There's a little number one up here in the corner where there's a notch. And I think the notch is to help you line them up. Um, so if you put this down, you know where the notch was. The next layer you would put down, you would put it in about the same area as the notch. And then you could see it would line up right. So we're going to start with the flowers. And I'm going to put the flowers in the bottom corner of my layer here. And I already have pixie spray on the back of this. So uh, let's see, and I want it to kind of hang off a little bit. So we're gonna go kind of up the side and along the bottom. Okay, and then we'll just press our pixie spray into place and you can see that it's not gonna move. It's just gonna stay there for me nicely and I don't have to worry about it. So I am then going to bring in some Misty Moonlight ink. Oh, actually, I'm going to start with Balmy Blue. A little bit of Balmy Blue. I'm going to make my sunflowers blue because they're my flowers. I can make them any color I want. 
So I'm going to start with the balmy blue brush. I do mark mine. I'm not one of those people that only has one for blue because balmy blue and night of navy, they're not the same. Balmy blue is a light blue. Night of navy is very dark. So I wouldn't want to have night of navy on this brush and then dip it into my balmy blue and use it. Um, that's just a personal preference. If you want to do yours like that, you absolutely can. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit of ink on my brush. Sometimes I do one of two things. I either rub a little bit of it off on a scratch paper and then use it. Or if I have like a really dark color, I might put it onto a clear block. And that way I can rub it around and get nice coverage of ink on my brush. Okay, so I've got some balmy blue ink on here. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to rub it onto my flowers. And I'm kind of trying to um, have it be mostly in the middle. And then I'm going to add the misty moonlight and have that go a little darker around the edges. So we're just kind of putting the balmy blue there um, in the middle. Then I'm going to bring in the misty moonlight. And while I could probably then dip this brush in there and use it, I don't want it to get contaminated by misty moonlight ink. So I am going to leave it. So I've got a brush that I have for misty moonlight here. And I am just going to kind of rub that off and then put some on the other side. You can probably see there's a, you can see this a lot better. Uh, there's a lot more misty moonlight on here. And that just kind of helps me, um, what's the word, just kind of spread out the ink a little bit so it's not quite so crazy. And then I'm going to add some misty moonlight here around the tips of my flower mostly so i'm trying not to you know cover all of the balmy blue that i just put on i keep going over here where there's literally no cardstock it's just scratch paper <laughs> and so we'll do that and then the nice thing about pixie spray is because it's sticky on the entire sheet you can kind of lift it up off your cardstock and you can look and see what you're dealing with here. And I really like what I'm getting there. I've got a little bit lighter blue on the inside and then the dark misty moonlight on the um, outer edges. I might just go a little bit more ham here and get just a little bit more, get some more ink on there, um, a little darker on the edges of these tips. And I can see that I stuck my finger there, so I'm going to have to be careful and kind of wipe my finger off. But okay, so. I just licked my fingers and wiped them on my pants. That's how I roll. Okay, so then I'm going to gently lift off my mask. There we go. So that's what we have so far. So pretty. I love blending brushes because they really allow you to um, really work with layers of color and gradation and all that kind of stuff. So good deal. All right, so the next mask I am going to use, um, they have three and four. Three is the solid open circle, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I did have my notch, you know, kind of up here. I wasn't paying attention to where it was, but um, I'm just going to fiddle around with this, kind of move it a little bit here and there until I feel like my circles um, look right. I think like, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to bring in some pecan pie. And then I have a pecan pie blend, so I'm going to add some pecan pie to the middle. And I'm just going to wipe that balmy blue off on my hand. And then I can use this side uh, for my pecan pie, just because I don't want to have too much pecan pie on there. So where it's not going to look, you know, blended, it's just going to be a, like a, I don't know what, like if I was to do that, then there would be a blob. I don't want to have a blob. I want to have it nicely blended. So I'm just going to come in here, add some ink, and now I can come back to my block and load my brush up with some more ink and keep going here. Okay, so the pecan pie is done. Bring in number four. So I kind of skipped number two. That was the leaves, but I want to put the leaves where I want to put them. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to do a little bit darker ink now. I'm going to do some early espresso. So now I'm going to rotate this around again until it comes to where I think it's the correct orientation. It was for that, not necessarily for this. That was good. This one, I'm going to move it just a little bit 
I think. There we go. Press it down because we got some pixie spray on the back of that. Not going to go anywhere. And now we're going to bring in some early espresso. And I feel like this might already have enough ink on it because I was playing around with this earlier. So I'm going to try doing this with the ink that I have on here first. And then if I need more ink, then I will add more. And actually, it's not as dark as I thought. So I'm going to go ahead and add some and then kind of gently rub some of that off. So we're just adding some more contrast here now with the pecan pie and then the early espresso. So then we can close that up, close up our pecan pie, and then remove this mask here. <gasps> Look how cool that's looking. So exciting. And then the leaves, and I think other people have mentioned this, they I don't like how they have them oriented. So for me, I'm just going to add leaves where I want to add leaves. And so I'm going to start with this big flower up here. And I'm going to add a leaf right next to it. Something maybe along the lines of that. So I'm going to press my mask down. Since I've got the pixie spray on there, it's now stuck on there. It's not going to move. And I've got a little brush for old olive. Get a little old olive on my brush here. Tap some of it off. And then let's get a leaf done. And I'm going to put a little more pressure at the top of this leaf than I am at the bottom. Uh, just because I want to have some contrast there also with the leaves. And then I can kind of pick it up, look at it, looks good. I'm going to come in and add a leaf here. So I'm going to add this little guy right there with some more of my old olive. Add that little leaf there. And then I think I might go ahead and just sort of throw in something right there on the edge. Just because. Why not? Add a little more green there. But look how easy these things are to use, you guys. And I'm not kidding you. When you put that pixie spray on there, you don't have to worry about your mask shifting and then your work getting messed up. It works so good. Um, and again, like I said, I don't ever clean it off. You can, but I don't see what the purpose would be to clean it off since I'm only going to be using these on paper. Um, I guess if you were using them for other things, maybe you might want to clean them off. But I just literally rinse off the front with water and I just gently pat them dry with a towel and they're perfect. Let me pull this up because this is fantastic. Look at that. <gasps> so pretty. So now we need to put a sentiment on here. And since I use so many thank you cards, I've decided to use a pretty large sentiment and I'm going to use the thanks so much. But I wasn't sure what color of ink I wanted to put on here. So this is kind of something that I do frequently and this might be a tip for you guys. So normally you would say, oh gosh, should I do that in early espresso? But let's just say you stamped it on there and you hated it. Well, then you've ruined your entire card, right? So what I do is I stamped it on a piece of scrap white. I kind of cut it out and then I can lay it on there and say to myself, do I like the early espresso? Yeah. But what if I use pecan pie? Would it look better? I don't know. Let's look. So then I stamp it on pecan pie and trim it out. I don't think I like the pecan pie nearly as well as the early espresso. I also decided, what about Misty Moonlight? I should try Misty Moonlight. So I stamped it in Misty Moonlight. And then I stick it on there and then I look at it. I do like the Misty Moonlight, but I think I like the early espresso the best. So that's what I'm going to end up going with. So I'm actually going to stamp it now in early espresso. But that's a really good way to avoid, not that it's a mistake, but I've done that num a number of times where I've stamped something in a color that I thought was going to look really good and it didn't. And that's just a way so that I don't have to waste my beautiful work and start over because we've all got scraps of white cardstock laying around, you know. So that's just a little tip for you guys. And these I'm just going to throw them out. I mean, I guess I could fussy cut them a little bit better and use them, but that's not the purpose of what I was doing that for. So I'm going to throw them out. Okay, so I have my stamp and I need to get my early espresso ink here. And I'm going to stamp it on a scratch paper first just to make sure that it's positioned on the stamp like I think it is. And so I can, when I stamp it, it's going to go where I want it to and it's not going to be crooked or anything. 
I think, okay. And I may end up touching my green leaf. I'm okay with that. If that happens, I'm just kind of guiding myself here. And let's hope it's straight. <gasps> Fantastic. So there we go. Okay. So now I didn't see when I cut myself an extra piece of paper, I don't screw it up. So note to self, whenever I go live, always cut myself an extra piece of paper and then I won't screw up. Well, that's not always true, but in this case it works. Okay. So this is going to be a very slight border, like a 16th of an inch all the way around. Okay. And I did cut my card base the hot dog way, the four and a quarter by 11, because I want to add some ribbon to this. And the ribbon I'm going to add is this sparkly, ooh, that side's kind of cool too. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Did you guys look at the difference here? So there's really two sides to this ribbon. I did not know that. This side is like a very light kind of sky blue, but it does have some silver sparkles. I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up. Maybe if I stick it on white. Um, and then this is the velvety side that definitely has the sparkles, but that is very subtle. I kind of like that. Wow. How would that even look? Because my idea was to use the other side, but this is, this is kind of nice. Hmm. I'm not sure that it totally matches. But does this totally match? Probably not. Neither one of them are a perfect match. But I think I do like the darker, that this side is a little darker, so I like that better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the inside of the card, and then I'm going to bring it to the front and tape it underneath my main layer there so that uh, nobody knows that I'm a cheater that way. Okay. There we go. And i got to figure out where do I want it. I think right here is about kind of where I want it. Yeah, I just wanted to have a little bit of interest on the card. So that's why I decided to go with some ribbon. And I thought, why not use something new and fun? And we have other ribbons that would probably work, but okay. And then we'll pull it. Always make sure we have it flat in there because I've done this before where I've accidentally twisted the ribbon and then Put the whole card together and then noticed it was twisted on the inside so i try to check now okay so since this ribbon is a little bit on the thick side we're going to use dimensionals to uh, put this layer on let's put them a little closer <laughs> a little closer together <laughs> okay <laughs> oh good lord there are days, you guys, where I wonder what I am doing. Okay, I'm going to put one in the middle, one here, one here, and then all of these. So we will tear off the paper backings. And there. Okay. So now we need to kind of eyeball this and make sure we have equal distance all the way around. Okay. <gasps> so pretty um but i also wanted to add some bling and i think these blue blings on here are the perfect blue blings and these are iridescent pastel gems and so i kind of want to maybe do something along those lines okay and then look what i did on the inside i did this earlier I did the exact same thing so that I could put it on the inside just in the corner there. And I really like putting things in the corner. I just feel like the randomness of it sticking off the edge looks really cool. Okay, so let's get that on the inside there. And ta-da! Card 